When you're doing design for a laboratory exhaust system, one of the terms you could run across is effective stack height. That's not a real term for practical engineering design. I can show you where it came from and why to not use it. In the ASHRAE handbook, there's a series of equations that you use when you're doing laboratory exhaust design that predict plume rise. And they predict it all the way out to some highest point, some final rise that happens a long way downwind. You then pretend that it happens right above the stack and continue to make adjustments to then figure out what the air quality is at your building. This point is known as the effective plume height, but has morphed over time, in some cases, to be called effective stack height. And the reason that's dangerous is that you have a physical stack height, and that's what you're designing. You also have volume flow rate and an exit velocity. You use your physical stack height, the flow rate, and the velocity to calculate the plume rise. If you use this as your stack height, you're going to be predicting plume rises much higher than what you're really getting out of your physical stack height. So forget about that effective stack height. Use your real stack height. The real risk in using that effective stack height is you're going to predict all that high plume rise and way underestimate re-entrainment and possibly have air quality problems. So forget effective stack height. Use physical stack height, volume flow rate, exit velocity, and in the new ASHRAE equations, you also look at downwind distance, where all of your air intakes are that you're concerned about. And you have to use a whole range of wind speeds as well in the new formulation. For example, this is kind of a low wind speed plume rise case, but if you have a high wind speed, you get very little plume rise, you could end up with a lot of reentrainment at a nearby air intake. For an intermediate wind speed, you'll end up with some intermediate plume rise. Could be a problem at a neighbor's air intake or a high air intake on your building. So you look at a whole range of wind speeds, you use your physical stack height, your volume flow rate, your exit velocity, the distances to all your air intakes that you're concerned with, run through all the equations, make the necessary adjustments to your design, and you'll have good air quality.